number four on Ayurveda. So hopefully you guys did the dosha quiz that's in the files section. And you'll notice that there's two columns. There's one that says Prakruti and one that says Vrakruti. So Prakruti is like your blueprint. It's the doshic state you're born into. It's considered your state of health. And then Vrakruti is your current state of health. So you can retest your Vrakruti every three to six months. And you'll notice that it most likely will change a bit based on your diet, the environment you're in, what you're doing for work, how you're treating yourself, etc., etc. So also you may have noticed that you've got numbers all over the board and hopefully you filled out um, A, B, or C for every single compartment, every single question that was there. And if you were like, I don't really have an answer for that one, find an answer. You need an answer for all of these. So in the end, you're going to have some numbers. You're going to have like A's and B's and C's. You might notice something is at zero. You might notice that they're all exactly the same. Or you might have two that are really high and one really low or two closer together and one further down. Um, so that makes sense, right? Because according to video one or video two, when we talked about the doshas, um, you are a combination of all three of these doshas. You are vata, pitta, and kapha. But you will find that you lean towards one or two doshas most. So most of us are either dual dosha, where we lean towards two doshas or we're just one dosha. Some of us will find that we are very tridoshic and it's very even number wise across the board. Um, so when you're looking at your quiz, you're going to look at the numbers and the number that is the highest, say you have a number that's like at 24 and everything else is like 10 or something low, then that would be your dosha. If your A is really high, you're going to say, I am vata dosha. If you find that like your A and B are really high and your C is really low, you're going to look at which one is the higher number. So if your A was higher than your B, but your B is still far higher than your C, then you're dual doshic and you would say your AB, which would be Vata Pitta. Conversely, if it was the other way around and your B was really, really high and your A just almost was all right up there and your C was really low, you would say it the other way, that your Pitta Vata. Um, you might also find that your C is really high and your other numbers are really low or your C and your A are high and your B is really low. So basically whatever number is the highest, relate that A is Vata, B is Pitta and C is Katha. So just relate that to the dosha and if that one is higher up than all the other ones, you are that. And if your two are really similar, you are dual doshic and you announce the one that you're higher in first. Um, and again, your Prakruti, we're not going to really focus on that. That's kind of your born doshic state of health. We're going to focus on your Prakruti because that is what we can handle. We are in charge of taking care of our bodies and moving around what's going on with our bodies right now by paying special attention to what we put in and how we treat ourselves every single day. So figure out what dosha you are and let's talk about how we're going to balance the doshas. All right, so um, to figure out how you're going to balance the dosha, it's really important that you understand the six flavors or the six tastes of Ayurveda. So I always love to do, when I do live presentations, I always love to bring food in and actually have you try food. So if you have the opportunity to grab these six foods and try them out, I will highly recommend you do it while you watch this video. So you might even wanna press pause, go to the market, get these things and come on back. But the things you would want would be ginger, fresh ginger, just a tiny, tiny little nugget, a lime, um, I always use like seaweed flakes or anything that's super salty, um, you could do as well. I get dandelion greens, kale would also work, fresh medjool dates, oh, I love dates. And the last one we're going to do, let's see, which one didn't I mention yet? There's one I'm leaving out, ah, bananas. Get the really, really uber green bananas that are not ripe at all. So those are going to be the three things that I will have you try when you do these samples. Um, and you just need one banana. You don't even need a whole banana. So here we go. If you have the samples, put them out in front of you um, and let's have at it. So number one is going to be sweet. Sweet foods are like ripe bananas, cooked beets. They have a heavy, moist, and a cooling property to them. Um, so your sweet food that you're trying is a date. So if you've got the date, take the pit out and put it in your mouth. And you'll see that it creates a heavy, moist, and a cooling property in your body. So what I recommend you do is put it in your mouth, close your eyes, chew on it, and see if you get that heavy, moist, and cooling essence. So these are really important because when you start to learn about how to eat for your dosha, it's going to make sense like, oh, I would eat a date because it is heavy, moist, and cooling when my body is really light, hot, and dry. It's like you're counterbalancing the things that are happening in your body. So these flavors are really important to learn. 
Number two is salty. So if you have something salty, whether it's a little thing of Himalayan sea salt in your hands, some salty nuts, um, I always use those little seaweed flakes. You can try that as well. So um, salty is hot, heavy, and moist. So again, try that salty food and see if it leaves the essence in your mouth of hot, heavy, and moist. So you'll find that salty food actually increases salivation, increases internal moisture, and increases the fire in your body. The third one is sour. Um, examples will be like limes and lemon. Lemon. So this is hot, light, and moist. So take your little thing of lime, stick it in your mouth, close your eyes, and see if you get hot, light, and moist from it. And you will see that these sour foods do indeed heat you up, much like salty foods do heat you up internally and also create a deep salivation that creates a lot of lubrication and moisture in your body. The fourth one is bitter foods. This is like kale or dandelion greens and these are light, cooling, and dry. So again, take your little tuft of dandelion greens or your kale, get a good stem in there, put it in your mouth, chew on it a little bit, close your eyes and see if you get light, cooling, and dry. And you will see that these foods that do have a very dry essence, right? Think about it, a leaf. A leaf is very light and it's very dry. And typically, unless it's like a mustard green, it's not going to create heat. It's going to create a cool essence. It's going to dry up any wetness in your body, and it's going to be very light on your digestion. Number five is pungent. Pungent is going to be like ginger. So we've got that little ginger nugget, and it is hot, dry, and light. So try that little piece of ginger. Close your eyes, feel it, and see if you get hot, dry, and light. And again, it has a dryness that will wick up moisture. It has a hotness that will heat up any, um, any sort of weak digestion or coolness in the body. And then the last one is going to be astringent. And this is the most horrible one to try. It's um, usually almond or unripe bananas. And if your banana is not super unripe, if you've got a very, very green banana, you can just try a chunk of your banana. Um, but if you don't have a green banana, if you just have like an unripe banana, Take off a chunk of the skin, peel it back so you're on the inside, and bite into it. And you'll see that it's very astringent. It has this deep wicking quality. Um, and so a dry banana or an unripe banana or astringent quality is going to be dry, cooling, and heavy. So try that out and see if you get that essence of dry, cooling, and, and heavy. Um, and you will find that anything that is astringent is going to wick away moisture internally in your body. So think about that, right? If you're Vata Dosha and you already have this air dry space quality, you do not want dry green bananas. So interestingly, um, you know, fresh food is going to go all over the gamut. So where a unripe banana, an unripe banana is going to fall under the astringent category, a ripe banana would fall under the sweet category and the flavor, the taste profile will change. So an unripe banana would be dry, cooling, and heavy, where a very ripe, sweet banana falls under the sweet category and would be very heavy, moist, and cooling. So um, if you haven't gotten those, those tasters yet, I recommend you get the tasters. Do this again with the tasters so you can feel those essences inside the body. So when I break down for you exactly which foods are good for which doshas, you will completely understand the reasoning behind it. So look out for video number five. I hope you had fun with that, and I hope you uh, have something nice and wet to, to moisten up that ripe, that unripe banana wicking that I made you do.